notice of the time and place of this hearing was published in the advocate on July 8th. It's also posted in the town clerk's office. The person's wishing to be heard will be called in the following order. And uh, I know state ethics law is required. I tell you that this is being broadcast and the people at the table are members of the commission. We also have our new conservation agent and our senior clerk. So um, first order of business, minutes for approval from June 8th of 2021. And I think we've all had a chance to review. And if there's no further commentary, I'll accept the mo accept a motion to accept as presented. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved unanimously. Meeting mail. Joanne, do we have any meeting mail? I did not see any meeting mail. Okay. Old business. New business. I guess the first new business is to welcome our new conservation agent. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thanks. Um, so we have. Um, category of public hearing. We have an RDA for Jared and Kathleen Freitas. Jared or Gerard? Jared. 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 Okay. Jared. Thank you. Um, 1428 Main Street, a request for determination was filed by Jared and Kathleen Freitas for property located at 1428 Main Street, map 5, lot 6A. The applicant proposes to construct a 30 foot by 50 foot detached garage adjacent to the single family home, minor site grading and expansion of the existing paved driveway within the 100 foot buffer zone of the bordering vegetated wetland. My name is proposed garage plan 1428 Main Street in Cushion and Mass, dated May 21 of 2021. Um, I don't know if either one of you wanted to speak on behalf of the project. If are you just going to go with the plans as presented? Yeah, just go with the plans as presented. Please. Yeah, plans as presented. Um, so we did a site visit Saturday. Um, Pat, I don't know if you've been out there. If you wanted to comment, or I just want to leave it up to us. No, nope, I haven't. I haven't been out okay. there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a plan. I'll do my best to make this visible for the screen. I don't know if there's a keyboard on my shoulder anymore or not. So, um, maybe it's not showing up. Well, either way, but anyway, Main Street's here. Existing dwelling, the proposed garage, 30 foot by 50 foot. Oh, a little delay. Show me that way. Okay, there we go. So, Main Street's here. There's an existing paved driveway. They're going to extend it to the right a little bit. Right now, here, this is lawn. There is a is it gonna, there is a shed there. Is that shed getting that'll come down? Getting removed, and um, there's not much of a slope there. So your proposed erosion control is that sill fence or hay bale? I, I the, kind of dealt with John Romanelli. I think he said something about. I'm not sure to be honest. I'm guessing I can do whatever. It's probably hay bale, but it'd be good if John would let us know that. Okay. Um, so we've got it, you know, um, it's 52.9 feet from the flag line to the corner of the garage. That's the closest distance, so it's not in the wetland at all. And I think as long as, and this is going on slab, I'm guessing. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, as long as, that, did he say anything to you about putting any kind of a grate or anything in front of the garage to deflect water running down your driveway? No. Yep. Yeah. That'd be oh, because it's, yeah. 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 So if he if he if he does anything like that, um, it, it would be good to have him let uh, the office know whether it's Strand or Mr. Hannon, but you know, pre preferably the agent. Let us let us know that, and um, you know, this is you know otherwise a fairly simple project. So if I may ask, you just yeah. want to inquire as to a great a running water grate in front of the garage, and then what was the inquiry in regards to the hay bale? Yeah, so it says proposed erosion control on the plan, but it doesn't specify which which one it is. Okay. If you said the hay bale will be ideal. Sill fence. It seems, you know, something like this, hay bale will probably work, or silt sock. Okay. Is that, you know, that other okay. possibility too. John's, John's done projects like this, so he will know what to do. Sure. But he can't let the office know. Yeah. Okay. This may require a stormwater permit. Okay. The stormwater uh, bylaw was revised for a town meeting. Okay. 
Okay. It's been approved and it's, it's in effect now. Okay. Um, so this may require a stormwater permit. You should check with the planning board. Okay. Uh, but actually, just check with John. John, John will be able to tell you. He'll know based department. on the project if it's yeah. going to require that. And that, that will nail down the erosion controls and, and stuff like that. Okay. And um, there is a shortage of um, straw bales. <laughs> you can't use hay. Um, there's a shortage of straw bales. So you should go with the silk sock. Okay. Silk stock? Silk sock. Yeah. And you want one that's not wrapped in plastic. Right. You want the one that's biodegradable. That way you won't have to take it up. You can just leave it there and, and let it rot and, and replace it. It'll, it'll be fine at the end. Okay. It looks like a giant sausage, basically. Yeah. Okay. And they work really good. Yeah. And part of that, when John figures out what's going on with the drainage, as it's running, as whatever's running down the driveway, if the, you know, perhaps the grate in front of your door mitigates some of that runoff speed too. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you're gonna have a garage full of water. Yeah, the way it slopes. Yeah. yeah. Main Street's a little higher there. Okay. Yep. So, I don't know if anybody else has any questions or comments about this. So, I'll obtain a motion for a negative determination for 1428 Main Street with the conditions that Mr. Romanelli or any other agent on your project or an engineer communicates with Board of Health regarding stormwater and then what it is more specific about erosion control and um, any other design plans for the front of the garage. Okay. okay. So with that being said. So moved. Any second? second. Any further discussion? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. May, you I, want to stay? Yeah, may I ask a question? Sure. Uh, so once this gets squared away with the Board of Health, will there be another hearing sent to us to be rescheduled to have the plans approved, or what would Just be the next we, step? We after? voted, so um, talk to Board of Health, find out what their plan, you know, what their recommendations are, if they can communicate with the agent. Planning, planning Board. Should be Planning Board. Planning, planning board. board, sorry, my mistake, yeah. you're right, Planning Board. Um, communicate with the agent and if there's a need to have a public meeting on this we'll do that but I think you know, you're more or less ready it's just a matter of showing up details about the stormwater runoff. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. And you're not obliged or obligated to stay for the rest of the meeting if you don't want to. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you so much. Good thank night. You. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck. Uh, so next, also public hearing, we have an article by Ernest Addo for Wilford Lane. A request for determination is filed by Ernest Addo for property located at 4 Wilford Lane, map 24, lot 23F. The applicant proposes to remove fill and construction debris from the buffer zone to the bordering vegetated wetland. And that's not it, that's not it. Uh, I know, Mr. Hannon, you're a little more familiar with this project, project than the previous. I am. So I don't know if you wanted to comment first in relation to the conservation issues. I know the media. If I could. Board of Health issue as well. Yep. So just for a little background, um, the Board of Health has been up to the site. The Board of Health has issued um, an order to the property owner. And the Board of Health has not heard from the property owner um, in regards to that order. I did go out um, yesterday on behalf of the Conservation Commission just to see um, if any material had been removed or any other activity. I did watch your last meeting where Merrill Lee said that she didn't think Mr. Addo understood that he had to remove the dirt, Phil, and that she was going to go back out and talk to him. Um, I did get to talk to Mr. Addo while I was there, and um, I think he's under the impression that he doesn't need to remove the fill. But the fill is mixed with um, solid waste, and um, it does need to be removed. So it would actually be my recommendation that the board make a positive determination and that um, a notice of intent be filed and that the wetlands be flagged and the buffer zone laid out. And then going forward, Mr. Adda won't have any issues with where the buffer zone is and where the wetlands is. There does seem to be some confusion. Um, as to where the buffer zone is. Mm -hmm. And I think he's under the impression that the buffer zone starts at the trees further in the lot. 
And that's actually where the, where the wetland starts. And I did um, bring this up on all of the GIS. And that's a, that's a pretty big wetland system there. And it is very close to the street out here. I did a measurement. And in some places, the buffer zone is actually only 37 feet from the street. So it's been filled right up to the edge of the wetlands, if not into it a little bit. So I want to separate a couple of issues here. Yeah. So um, there is some fill that's pretty obvious. There's some piles. I'm guessing yes, nothing correct. had moved since well, Saturday. No, let me clarify. Okay, Just, sure. Um, so nothing has moved in weeks. Could I been out? Right. Yeah. Same, same little piles of concrete in mm -hmm. there. Yeah. There. And I know we've talked about this we, we we need to know where that stuff is going to go. It needs to go to a legal disposal site. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, well, so that I think that's the, the easy part. Yes. That's not easy. Now there's a, I want to call it an arc of trees along the edge where the soil, where the topsoil basically goes up to. And certainly everything behind that's coming up. And there's, there's no topsoil on that, there's fill, there's construction debris. Correct. That has to come up. Yes. We, we made that clear. So I guess, so my next question for you then is, <coughs> is are those two things the piles on top and the construction and the debris building. behind that arc of trees is that mixed with solid waste too yes or is it just what's the, under the, the whole the, no the whole <laughs> fill area is mixed with c and d construction and demolition debris mm. and concrete right pvc <laughs> pipe um, and, and other waste and this was brought in by pico stone mm. We have another enforcement action from the Board of Health with that same company. And this is a bit of a pattern. And I, I asked Mr. Addo um, and recommended to him that he talk to PICO because PICO may have some financial liability here. Um, they know better than to deliver that material there and dump it on the ground. He's, he's in that business. He, he clearly understands not to do that. And um, it needs to come out. We need to establish where the wetland is. And then we need to have a plan to make sure that no invasive species grow back into that space. Because that's the problem when something gets filled and cleaned out uh, or disturbed is nothing comes in but invasive species. And that needs to be checked up on um, throughout the year or throughout the growing season, uh, maybe for, for one or two seasons. Can you clarify the order that the Board of Health issue? Yes. Issue. What, is, what does the order state? Is the order was to um, hire a consultant. And to um, establish the limits of waste, and um, designate a legal disposal site, okay. and remove it. But it would need to be removed under permission from the Conservation <coughs> Commission, and it needs to be overseen by an engineer. It, it can't be a homeowner project. Um, you, you're talking a lot of material, and so we have an intersection here of both boards in terms of where the materials are going. Yes, we do not want it left anywhere else in the town of Christian. The, um, any other intersection of both boards that you see here, is it? Um, that's that's our, our only jurisdiction is the, is the solid waste violation. Your jurisdiction is the actual what? construction activity, mm -hmm. removing <coughs> it and uh, the restoration of the surface and getting some vegetation back in there to have the buffer zone perform the way it's supposed to perform. All right. Mr. Otto, I know you had a question. Yeah, yes, yeah, actually, well, the problem, I mean, I think we, we had, there was a little bit of uh, misunderstanding where the buffer zone started and where it begins. Mm -hmm. And also, talk, uh, the thing with the uh, Wilford Lane is a private lane, and because of that, the, Town is not obligated to plow all the way down to my end of the street, or is not obligated to conduct any formal construction. Well, I, I want to print on these pictures by because of time. I just want to show you guys this picture, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you read, this is Wolfer Lane, and right here, this is uh, this is can you see it? I'm familiar. Yeah, with you're very familiar. Well, there was a steep that dropped down. I mean, I'm sure you're very familiar with it. There was, there was a very 
there was a steep dust drop right next to the street. And uh, because the town's not obligated, they don't fail it or uh, do any form of construction on it. I took it up on myself to kind of put dirt because we had uh, we had this, uh, we had accidents where a lot of you know, you know, UPS trucks and Amazon trucks and myself and people that go on that road mm -hmm. were stuck in that steep end, which was very you know I mean we talk about preservation of human life is you know I mean uh, that uh, precedes anything in the buffer zone. So with that, that is filled with dirt. Mm -hmm. I mean, we um, I understand that you know we have conservation and everything else, but you know, I think any judge in Massachusetts will not be willing to take that and cause erosion and cause that steep, and people might end up in that same predicament. Well, when it comes down to the pile of stones, I found their uh, illegal place in Rams uh, Recycling Center, okay. and they have more than obligated to help, you know, get rid of it. So. If I could. Yes, please. The problem with removing the um, fill from the buffer zone is the asphalt brick concrete and other debris has been mixed with soil. Mm -hmm. And DEP's policy says that the recycling uh, facility in Raynham can only separate pre-sorted material. It has to be segregated. So the concrete and other material can't be mixed with soil. So that means it would have to be screened. But it's not mixed with soil, it's on top of the topsoil. It would, it would have to be screened and separated to do that. And then you need the soil to go somewhere. We don't know where the soil came from. You don't know what's in the soil. Um, so it's better to remove all the material from the buffer zone, dispose of it legally, That's or, or come up with another plan. Uh, to do something. That's impossible. But just just because there's a hole in the buffer zone doesn't mean we should fill it in with waste. Uh, I mean, with all due respect, that's definitely, I mean, that's definitely impossible. I mean, you're talking about, you know, you're talking about causing erosion and, and removing dirt from a steep next to the, uh, next to the road. I mean, you know, it, that is damn near impossible. I mean, it, it just, I, we had, well, we came to a compromise where, I mean, I didn't know where the buffer zone started. And ne I mean, negligence of the law is no excuse for the law. And I mean, neither the members of the board and yourself. We have to come to a compromise and establish the line between where the buffer zone started. So at any point, if uh, uh, Mr. Hannon thinks you know exactly where the buffer zone start, I mean, if you feel free to uh, come over to the house and just help me map it out. Because at this point, we just went by what we compromised and agreed on. Yeah, I think um, the more important line is the wetland flag line. Yes. Because the buffer zone well, is, is 100 feet. And now. yes, we all did take an educated guess. Sure. Guessing that at least certainly where the R3 tree line is, is, is in the buffer zone. Um, the one way, as Mr. Hannon just suggested, to remove any doubt is for someone to flag that wetland line. And that would require an engineer or a wetland specialist to do that. And I mean, that would require you as the homeowner to have to cover that cost. Um, I mean, I, as he's saying, it's, it, it erases any doubt. It also guides what's coming up. We certainly there's no doubt that what we've already talked about has to come out, that, so and and we've all it, agreed on that. And I'm that's, working. I'm definitely working on that. That's clear. Um, if you want to lay some of the blame of the confusion on me, I'll take it. No, 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 no. no, no seriously, no, I'm not. because I I could have come in and said immediately on the very first day we went to your property, you're going to hire an, a wetland specialist. We're going to flag it. And I would have been within my right to do that. Oh, and you, you sell it. And, you could have, but, okay. and so, if you're frustrated with me coming in late to say let's let's do that at the request of our at the recommendation of our new agent, I understand I'm that not, too. I'm not frustrated. So I'm not. So what what I'm recommending is that you have that engineer or that wetland scientist flag the wetland line, and it guides what happens from here on in beyond what we've already discussed okay let me and you know I don't I don't know what that's going to lead us 
maybe it works out in your favor. Well, I mean, maybe it does, right. maybe it doesn't. But the, I mean, at, at this point, you know, like we, we set recommendations that I'm mm -hmm. trying to work from one at a time. So you know, mm -hmm. in the near future, definitely. Of course, I want to know where to what extent I will be able to, you know, maybe go some grass or you know, or make it have a garden or something. But it looks like there's like ten different things from ten different people coming at the same time. And, you know, so I'm a little bit confused to, as to what or uh, what direction we take it because uh, Maryland, uh, uh, before Mr. Haney came and we already established a parameter of what was supposed to transpire, which I've already uh, applied for the RDA, uh, paid or uh, the necessary uh, requirement for it. Not to say I'm guaranteed to get it, but like I thought I was in a direction to a clear path to know what's to come with it. But now it seems like this. 10 different things from 10 different people. As I said, I, I understand your confusion and frustration, which is why I'm saying there are certain steps, no, no matter what, they're gonna happen, we've agreed to those, but let's get ourselves a wetland scientist to clear up much of the rest of it. And we can recommend several, and they, and they can get it done pretty quickly. I mean, some of it's obvious, but let's, Let's, let's remove the doubt of where the flag line is because that determines how far in the buffer zone goes. I mean, your patio is going to stay. I'm, I don't mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried about the, about the patio. If it's any point, I will take it out myself. That's not, that's not what I'm even worried about. The problem, the, what, I'm, what I'm more worried about is, you know, at this, at this point, like, I already have 10,000 things going on that I'm mm -hmm. dealing with. You know, and on top of that, on top of that, I have to fight an adverse uh, position lawsuit. Which, I mean, to be honest with you, I might not be in compliance with uh, my house. Might not be in compliance with the town. And at that point, well, then there's no point of me going through this whole process. I might as well just just sell the house or have it foreclosed on at, the, at this point. So, you know, if I'm if I'm supposed to go through all this process and my house will not be in compliance, then, I mean, what's the use? Yeah, I understand your frustration with that, too. I wish I could say we could help you with that. That part of it, we certainly can't. Um, well, oh, no, I, 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 well, how about I get rid of what we talked about? Uh, and we just put the RDA. I mean, I don't care about the patio. If if you need me to remove it, I'll go home and remove it right now. No, that's, 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 not, that's, that's not. That's not. I don't. I don't. I, that's I don't not, care about that's, that. That's, that's not, not part of it. That's I'll, the kind of thing we would have. And this, anyway. let me get rid of it. I'll get rid of the stones, and maybe in the next meeting or something, we go from there. So, stones definitely. Yes. Because. I mean, Mr. Hannon, I'm, Pat, I'm guessing that what's visible now on top of the soil, that's the kind of thing that can go to rain them. That could go, yeah. Okay. As long as it's not mixed with soil. And what's beyond that arc of trees. There's nothing to be used to be said to yourself. No, yeah, it's it's just it's more breaking stone and all of that. And I know you're gonna take that out. That's right. That can go to rain them as well. There's no top soil. Right. Yeah. So that can go to rain them as well. I'm gonna suggest that beyond that. Anything else that happens is based on what we hear from a wetlands a wetland scientist to put a flag line. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Okay. And, and I agree with you. You know, this this could cut both ways. Wetlands do get smaller; they don't all get bigger. And at least you'll have the benefit of knowing exactly what you can do up there, and this won't happen to you again. It's it's not the end of the world to have some wetlands. Yeah, but, <clears throat> yeah, but who's paying for it? I mean, I mean, it, 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 it's it's all. I mean, it sounds all good, but then mm -hmm. I, at the same time, that's something that you know. I, I, I mean, the town's not paying for it. No, and whether I had recommended this three or four months ago when we first went out there, yeah. it now you as the property owner would have to pay for it, just like you know the, the plans, totally right. the plans that the uh, Freitas has brought to us. They paid Zenith and, and engineering, and as part of that, a wetland scientist to do the flag line. I mean, the wetlands were f first done when they laid out their house project, but the most recent thing, they paid an engineer to give us plans and what they, you know, and they're not doing a very big project and they still had to pay for it. So that's not out of the ordinary to ask a homeowner to pay for that. So um, 
again, my recommendation is do what you were going to do with those piles that have no soil on them. Yes. They can go to rain them. Um, and then hire, and if you want a recommendation for a wetland scientist, Pat or Joanne can give that to you. But hire that person because it will move this process along. And 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 I'm apologizing to you personally no, I mean, for not saying. recommending that three months ago. I was hoping there was an easier way, but no. I um, mean, I'll this deal. Is, I'll deal with it, but uh, I mean, uh, it's not going to be right now. To be honest with you, I had, you know I have I have I have bigger fish to fry, and mm -hmm. you know th that's not part of uh, what I, I'm gonna, I'm going to be dealing with right now. To be honest, oh. I mean, you know, if you want to flag the RDA and put it on and shelf it for now, yes, yeah, but yeah. So the stuff we've talked about removing ties in with what Board of Health has said as well. So and I will take care of that. I'll yeah, take so, care of all that so that takes care of part of, where, of what we were recommending anyway. So okay. in that case, you know, you're, you're getting a half the steps okay. check, checked off. Sure. I don't know if there's, otherwise um, I, can, I can entertain a motion to uh, table and we'll continue this to the next meeting and if you have no progress, you can just let us know you have nothing new to report in two weeks. And we well, I'm not going to be around in two weeks. So I have to go out and stay for some family matters. So uh, I might not make, I will, I'm definitely not going to be able to do the uh, mm -hmm. next meeting, but I can send an email or send you pictures of uh, all the stuff being uh, mm -hmm. removed and uh, yeah. maybe the meeting after that. You know. I know, so Pat, because you're here and you represent both boards. When stuff like that gets removed, do they contact the Board of Health to let them know? Well, he's he's what he's currently going to do is for the Conservation Commission. Okay. So I would just ask that he submits the weight tickets for the material removed from the from the property to the Conservation Commission, just to show that it arrived at a legal destination and okay. how yeah. much was removed. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Yes, yeah, so the folks are folks at random will give you those. Yeah, because you know they want you to pay up. So if you could make photocopies and yeah, you sure. can even take a picture with your phone and email them to the yeah. office that way or mail them in either way. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I would caution that if Mr. Addo delays too long, you may find DEP taking action. So, yeah. um, and it's easier dealing with us than dealing with the state. No, I understand. I mean, I totally understand that, but at this point, you know, just like it's I mean, I, I just want, yeah. I understand that, but at this point, I'm a, I'm a little bit frustrated, but at this point, I have, I have other things going on that, you know, just this, I have bigger fish yeah, to fry. Yeah, you away which one you yeah, float that's the, I'm, yeah, so I'll take care of what, you know, I'll get, I'll get rid of all the, the pile of stones and all okay. that stuff, and right. I'll get rid of them. I'll, I'll get in touch with the Board of Health, that's all time, but not right now. Okay. All right. Um, so when, in that case, I'll take a motion to continue until the first meeting in August, whatever date that is. Is that the 10th or the 11th? Oh, no. Wednesday, the 11th. The middle column, Wednesday, 11th. Wednesday, August 11th, there is. Thank you for the new sheet, Joanne. August 11th. And I'll, I'll send you an email. Yeah, sure. I mean, if I, uh, I think I should be able to make it, but if I can, I'll just send you what I have. <coughs> uh, the receipts, like your receipts. Yeah, yeah. Like the receipts can come in any any time. All right. Yeah. And if you, then if you're going to move ahead with hiring a wet wetland scientist to flag the wetland line, they can give you a recommendation. We have, we have some good ones in the area, and uh, they'll they'll get that done for you. And again, that guides where the offers online is and, and uh, I'm sure that will take a while also because I remember I think uh, I, I dealt with I uh, uh, met Dave Madigan a few a few months ago and just like a two or three months waiting period because they're so busy ahead of schedule well so what is he do I don't know uh, his name he does the same thing as uh, uh, Urban uh, oh just yes engineer. engineer yeah that's correct okay. so I think Zenith does weapons flagging I think they have a weapon scientist so I think John is actually done. Yeah, I think yes. yes. That's yes. Right. Yeah, John. Yeah, he did more. He did. Uh, <coughs> the I think he can move along with that. But yeah. John, I'm not sure if John lives be, in town. So I'm not sure if he'll be able to do my property because uh, I don't know there'll be a conflict of interest somewhere. I'm not sure. Okay. Because yeah, he did, uh, you know, uh, up the street. 
where I'm being called with. So, um, oh, okay. so um, I'll take a motion to continue until August 11th. So moved. Uh, second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. That's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Adams. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, next on here is 21 Evergreen Drive. I did get a text from Sue Fernandez today saying that Michael Costa hadn't done anything else. Excuse me one second. Was that a public hearing? That was. Yes. You need to close it. Oh. Okay. Just need a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. All right. Technicalities. Yeah, I yeah. understand. Let's All new stuff. Right? Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> follow the steps. I have no meeting. problem with that. No. All right. So um, again, Sue, Sue Fernandez said Michael Koska had not reported anything or you know, sent in any plans for 21 Evergreen Drive, so there's nothing to report no. there. Okay. And uh, on that same note, Bob, I can let you know that today was the filing deadline and we had no new filings. So right. So if you don't have anything for the commission for the twenty eighth, we can just skip right to the eleventh. That's what I'm Okay. Yeah, for your right. information. Okay. Um, so next on here, eighty eight Wing Lane. Um, we took a walk out to the solar farm on Wing Lane. We took a went with one of the engineers on Saturday. The issue being the drainage area at the back of the property facing well, along I guess is the east eastern edge. Eastern Asia. and um, they had changed one aspect of the way the water drained through the riprap to create an extra little trench to direct water because it was going to back up within that drainage, drainage pond as opposed to the basin where the stuff settles out. Um, how have you been out there yet? Do you want to see what we're looking at? Yeah, I'd like, <coughs> I'd like to see it, but I would go out there. Hello, Mr. St. Jean. How are you? How are you? Doing? How are you? So we'll turn it this way, I suppose. Oh, this is the one where they dug a little channel out to the what? Yeah. yeah so okay, I was up there today. I didn't okay. get access to it, but I did talk to Jim Merritt about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have the contact information for the person to get into the site. Right. And I will be going up there and okay. going to take a look at that. Yeah. Yeah. And they um, so a couple of things are different on here. The access road is different in actuality than is showing on the plans. Not that that in impacts us, but they said fire department's already been out there and seen the change in the road. Um, yeah. But our concern was this area back here, and the engineer that was there said, you know, he explained why they had added that extra little trench. And um, they were reflected in the plans, and also they do plan on seeding all of this because the basin, the bottom of this lowest area, isn't seeded at all. Yep. So they're going to do that. But if you're going to be talking to, I am. Because uh, Jim Merritt was very concerned ECMG about the construction ES, of the basin. ES Energy, or whatever their company is called. And not entirely the contractor's fault. The planning board has had missed. Um, the requirement for a stormwater management um, mm -hmm. permit in their, in their planning mm -hmm. process. So this one didn't go through that, right? The last six that just got approved did. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So they, they'll be all set as long as they construct it like this right. So whatever final, you know, further review you're going to do with these folks, you're going to factor in stormwater management or? I'm going to factor in stormwater as well. Yeah. Um, I have a meeting with John Romanelli Friday morning to look at another site that he's concerned about. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go there after after I meet with our Mr. Romanelli. So my question is, is that something they would have to file for additional work because it wasn't on the plans? Either or if, if they won't get a COC until, until, until it's done right. Yeah. yeah. And then it would, it would have to show up on the, on the as built as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. As Sure, that new road will. Yeah. yeah, so <coughs> that was that was what we saw. The road might have changed the stormwater calc because for the stormwater bylaw, mm. the road's considered to be impervious. Okay. So they may have. Mm. Right. Good. And they said that the it was higher than what they thought over Yeah, which is strange that, you know, whoever, that, yeah. <coughs> you know, whoever mapped, mapped that out yeah. did notice that and get to the bottom of it. Rose back up a little bit, and the yeah. was just going to settle. Okay. Um, 
Mr. Poynot, thank you for tuning in. We have no other discussion items except, uh, so for those viewing, this is Andrew Poynot, who's an environmental analyst and circuit writer for DEP. And if you have anything else you'd like to use for any, any, any introduction, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Andrew Poynot. I'm the circuit writer and environmental analyst. So the, in the circuit writer role, um, I provide technical assistance and training to the conservation commissions throughout the southeast region. I'm going to share my screen here. Good. Give me permission to do that. So I'm going to go over the Wetlands Protection Act procedures, and if, if you have any questions, feel free to stop me um, while I'm on the slide that you have a question about. So the Wetland Protection Act regulations are uh, 310 CMR 10.0, and the procedures section, which I'm mostly going to focus on today, is in 10.05. So I'm going to cover um, what the permitting process is today, and we're, we're going to talk about, so when permits um, are submitted, when permit applications are submitted, it's a request for determination of applicability, notice of intent, or an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. That is sent to the Conservation Commission, and then a copy of that is sent to DEP. We are still currently requiring that electronic um, submittals of, of applications be sent to us. Andrew, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna minimize a couple- The is the one who makes the determination. And can, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, I'm just gonna minimize one of these windows on our screen because it's blocking some of your text. Okay. Oops. Just let me know when you're all set. Go for it. Is that good? All set. Okay. Proceed. So the, the Conservation Commission makes a determination and issues the permits, um, which would be the determination of applicability for RDA. Uh, order of conditions or order of resource area delineation and then if an appeal is made DEP is the one who gets the appeal and we are the ones who make the decision on the appeal so I'm, I'm mostly going to focus on determinations of applicability and uh, but these are all of the permits I'll focus on determinations and notice of intent as well as uh, anorides and orides. So there's deter determinations of applicability, orders of resource area delineation, order of conditions, emergency authorization, enforcement orders, certificate <coughs> of compliances, and extensions to orides or orders of conditions. Time periods and within the regulations, if it's 10 days or less, it's business days. And uh, this comes up in the appeal period, as well as legal ads. Uh, one of the biggest questions I get is about legal ads uh, often. Um, and it, the first day of uh, when you're counting is the next day. So it starts on zero. So if you end up, you have your hearings on Wednesdays. So if your newspaper is on Wednesday, is published on Wednesday, then uh, they could have it published one week prior to the hearing, as long as that's not on a week that there's a holiday. If your newspaper is published on a Thursday and your hearing's on a Wednesday, you need to have that, that legal ad published two weeks before the hearing. Uh, when it is greater than 10 days, then you're talking calendar days. Um, so actions by the Conservation Commission, as you know and had today, can only happen when there's a quorum. 
and uh, it takes more than half of the members present to make a decision. And um, it takes a majority of the members to sign that permit applicate that permit, uh, whether it's a determination or an order. And you could sign a determination or an order even if you vote against it. Can you explain that? So a request for determination of applicability can be used for multiple occasions and it can be used for to determine whether an area is uh, subject to the jurisdiction of the Wetlands Protection Act, whether the boundaries of the wetland resource areas are accurate, whether the work that is being requested is subject to protection of the Wetlands Protection Act, and um, whether the area or the work is subject to a local bylaw, and whether the uh, Alternatives analysis is sufficient for the riverfront area of performance standards. I, for determination of applicability, the applicant sends one copy of the determination of the request to DEP and, and then also sends it to the commission. Uh, no file number is issued by DEP for a request for determination of applicability. There is no filing fee unless there is a bylaw fee. So DEP does not have a filing fee for RDAs. And there is no other notification for a request for determination of applicability unless the commission requires it by their bylaw. Uh, the issuance of a determination needs to be done within 21 days of receipt of the RDA and a legal ad needs to be placed at least five days, five business days <clears throat> prior to the meeting. You have the meeting, you take in information and make the determination. Uh, this is important, I'm going to talk about this for every permit. You want to make sure that when you are issuing the permit, that you send it to DEP the same day that you send it to the applicant. The 10 day appeal period starts when you send it to DEP. So um, there, there have been, it can get messy if it's not sent to DEP on the same day. Um, if, especially if um, work begins and it's sent to a significantly later than, um, than 10, you know, than when it was sent to the applicant um, if we end up deciding to appeal it so please just make sure that you end up sending it to us the same day and of course print a copy for both us and the owner determination of applicability cannot be amended or extended it's recommended because there are so many different requests that can be asked of the commission when doing a request for determination of applicability to have the RDA in front of you and make sure that the commission is voting on each item that they're requesting of you. So if they're asking whether or not the area is subject to the protection of the act, you want to make sure that you're making a determination on that as well as whether or not the boundaries are accurate and go through the list and make sure that you're making a determination on each point that they are asking you to. Um, you know, ask questions, make sure you're getting answers for the questions that you have. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. Um, I'm here to help. I, I ask questions from I answer questions from commissions throughout the region. That's what I'm here for. Do you have any questions on RDAs and determinations of applicability before we move on? Um, you made a comment about signing a determination even if you didn't vote for it. Can you clarify that? So if you voted against, if you voted 
say everyone on the commission voted to give a negative determination, a negative determination, and you voted to give a positive determination um, to require a notice of intent. Uh, I'll use that uh, as an example. Uh, then you and and you need to you're trying to gather your staff is gathering signatures for the determination of applicability you can still sign that determination even if you voted against it okay does that make sense what would be the purpose of signing something you voted against at least half of more than half of the members need to sign a a permit a determination or an order so if you're scram if you're scrambling to get signatures in order to get it out on time mm -hmm. uh, i know different commissions do things differently some have determinations ready for you to sign at the hearing and if you have that that's great if it if you don't and your staff is um, preparing it after that mm -hmm. hearing and you're trying to get the determination out within 21 days of receipt of the request for determination of applicability, you you may end up running into a situation where not everyone who voted the way that it passed is available to come into the office and sign it. So you might have someone who is available who voted the opposite way of everyone else and you need the signatures, um, so you're you're in there. You're able to sign it even if you happen to disagree with the determination. So all right. So basically, what you're saying is you're signing it. In in that case, as a means of saying that you made a vote on it, and you've got the requisite number of signatures on the paper to move ahead. Correct. Thank you. So, any activity that's not specifically specified um, as an exempt activity within 310 CMR 10.02 in, in 1 and 2, it describes what the exempt activities are. And in the judgment of the issuing authority, in this case the Conservation Commission, will alter an area subject to protection under the Act is required to file a notice of intent. The notice of intent has an instruction page which very thoroughly describes everything that's needed in a notice of intent application. And, uh, you know, some of those things are making sure that the delineation methodology is provided. That's one that I often see is missing. I also often see that they don't uh, have proof of natural heritage, uh, proof of mailing to natural heritage or uh, division of marine fisheries, and which is required as well uh, for certain, you know, when it's in estimated habitat or, or within um, DMF jurisdiction, as well as uh, there's lots of notices that don't provide stormwater reports and just check that they're exempt. Uh, in, in some of those cases, it's a redevelopment project, which they should be going through the redevelopment checklist. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but there is a, redevelop a stormwater redevelopment checklist, um, which goes through the requirements for redevelopment projects. Uh, and also, they need to demonstrate how they're in compliance with the performance standards and clearly document what area uh, for each resource area is being impacted. Depending on the type of work, they may need different professionals to perform that work. Um, and, you know, we might need a professional engineer, a wetland scientist, a landscape architect, it's up to you as the commission to determine um, what type of making to make sure that they're providing you with professional uh, the, the right qualified professionals for the job. 
So, upon receipt of the notice of intent, DEP reviews the notice of intent and makes sure that all submittal requirements are there, and we issue a DEP file number within 21 days. If it does not meet the minimum requirements, we send a no file number notification. At a hearing for a notice of intent, uh, well, before the hearing, the applicant needs to send one copy to DEP, and as I said before, we're still requiring electronic copies, as well as two copies to the commission. Some commissions require much more than that. The legal ad needs to be placed five, five days prior to the hearing, and then you need to hold the hearing within 21 days of receipt of the minimum submittal requirements. So if, if they didn't provide the minimum submittal requirements, it can be beyond that, and, but you would have to specify what they need to submit to you, and then it would be 21 days from when they submitted that to you. Uh, we are out of the, require, the extension from the state of emergency, so we are back to the 21 days. That ended in December of 2020. You can't open a hearing without proof of a butter notification, and in um, one instance I've run into recently, a applicant only notified a butters within the town that they were applying with, even though it was right on the border with an adjacent town. So there were several butters that were not notified. So if um, if an uh, applicant is, is working on the border of another town, please make sure that they're also notifying the butters in the neighboring town. You can open a hearing without a DEP file number. However, you cannot close the hearing without a DEP file number. And I would just want to, uh, one other common mistake that I've, I've seen is, <coughs> The commission's closing hearings, at, even though they already recommended that they provide additional information, um, that the applicant provides additional information, and they close the hearing and say that they'll issue an order of conditions dependent on providing revised plans as discussed. Uh, you don't want to do this. It ends up making a it a lot more difficult and complicated if the applicant doesn't end up uh, revising the plans in the way that you required them to and requested that they do it. And it's uh, much more difficult to reopen the hearing and provide additional comments if, if they didn't revise the plans as you described. So it's always best to continue the hearing until you have everything and you approve the plans that they provided. Continued hearings can happen in three different situations. Uh, you can continue a hearing without consent of the applicant at an, at an announced hearing to a date within 21 days of receipt of an NOI, or you can continue it with consent of an applicant to an agreed upon date announced at the hearing, or with consent of the applicant for a period not to exceed 21 days after submission of specified information. When reviewing a notice of intent, if work is within more than just the buffer zone, um, you should always be reviewing with the mindset that they should be avoiding impacts to wetland resource areas first, then minimizing, and then mitigating. And in any time that they're impacting a bordering vegetated wetland or riverfront area, uh, you really do want to make sure that they're doing everything that they can to avoid. The, both the regulations and the instructions require that they do an alternatives analysis and and try to avoid as much as possible any impact to BBW or roof front area. The, um, 
What was I going to say? It, the regulations for performance standards for BBW and Riverfront area both say that you may approve up to that amount. It does not say shall, and that's a big distinction. Um, uh, I've seen a lot of applications where it, they state that they're under that threshold and therefore they're, it, they should be granted the order of conditions and they don't really go into an alternatives analysis in depth at all. It's either the preferred alternative or no build or it's something that wouldn't work. Um, and they should really be trying to avoid and minimize as, as much as they can. So at the hearing, you would require acquire information. You want to conduct a site visit. Uh, some commissions conduct site visits prior to the hearing. Some conduct it after the hearing. And you want to confirm all the wetland resource area boundaries are accurate. Review the documents. Close the hearing only if you approve of the plans um, or if you're going to deny it. I mean, you could do that as well, but don't ever close the hearing unless you unless you approve of the plans um, with no revisions. And then you need to issue the order of conditions within 21 days of closing the hearing. Uh, again, what the original goes to the applicant of the order of conditions, and you need to issue the order of conditions the same day to DEP as you do to the applicant. Do you have any questions yet on this? Okay. I'm here. So far, so good. Okay. And then the, the applicant should wait until after the 10, 10 business days of the appeal period ending to record the order of conditions that the registry of deeds. You should deny an order of conditions if it does not meet the performance standards and does not meet the regulations. And you should specify which performance standards it does not meet. Uh, you should also deny a permit, deny a project, and if there is insufficient information and clearly state what information is insufficient, that you requested it and that they did not provide that information to you. Order of conditions should be very specific. Um, I should try another one. You want to make sure that if you're if you're adding special conditions, make sure that's specific um, as to what exactly is required. Uh, a lot of some of my favorite conditions, if they are having impacts to BBW and you're requiring that they do. Um, replication is to start the replication prior to starting the work mm -hmm. and then that way the replication is uh, close to it it's, gives it time to be successful um, as you're doing the work and so by the time that they get to the point that the three years is up and they request the certificate of compliance the replication area should should be looking pretty good I'm going to go into the abbreviated notices of resource area delineations. Uh, resource areas can be approved through uh, abbreviated notice of resource area delineation, a notice of intent, or even a request for determination of applicability. A, however, with a request for determination of applicability, as I said in the past, you cannot extend a determination, whereas you can extend an order of resource area delineation. The simplified re review provisions no longer apply for the, the order of resource area delineations. Uh, and yeah. You would then vote as to whether or not the delineation is accurate, whether it's modified and now accurate with the revised plan, whether it is inaccurate and it was not modified, and um, 
and then you would explain why it is inaccurate. So, the people that can uh, appeal a decision by the Conservation Commission are the applicant, the landowner, an abutter, an aggrieved party, 10 people within a cushionet, uh, DEP, and DEP. And we have 10, bus 10 business days from the day that it was sent to DEP. Work may not proceed until the appeal period has ended. Extensions of, the, of orders, again, uh, orders of resource area delineations and orders of conditions can, can be extended, whereas determinations cannot. Uh, commissions can issue extensions for orders of conditions and ORADs. I've gotten this question several times because it doesn't say specifically ORADs on the Form 7. And in cases where you should deny it, uh, if, if you're reviewing uh, an extension, you should always go out and check and confirm that the wetland resource area boundaries are still accurate. If they're not, you should deny it. Uh, if work is occurring that is in violation of the order, you can deny it. If work is incomplete, and that incomplete work is damaging the interests of the act. And if new information has become available, that indicates that the order is insufficient to protect the interests of the act, you can deny it. Where no work has begun, and unless there's extenuating circumstances as to why work has not begun. And as I say that, um, I just want to make sure that you're, you're aware of how the polling period worked from the COVID emergency. I will say it as how it works for state permits. Your permit is a municipal permit and you should check with your um, town council. But my understanding is it is similar for municipal permits as it is for state permits. So you, it, from March 10th, to the day that it was going to expire, you would add those many days on the end of, on June 15th. So March 10th, 2020, the start of the emergency to the expiration gets added to June 15th, 2021. And if your permit was, um, if your permit was approved prior to the start of the emergency and didn't expire during the emergency, you can still add that time on at the end of the permit. I've had many commissions ask, um, you are able to issue extensions to permits even though there was the state of emergency and they haven't lapsed yet. Emergency authorizations. Um, you can issue an emergency authorization solely for protection of public health and public safety. It should be time limited to 30 days to perform the emergency work. And um, with the exception of if DEP's Bureau of Waste Site Cleanup has has issued an immediate response action, then it is 60 days. Enforcement options, you have different enforcement options and um, you have the notice of a violation, you can issue an enforcement order on um, the Wellness Protection Act Form 9. There's civil action, you can take them to court and criminal action as well. Uh, if so if you issue an enforcement order and it's past the appeal period of the enforcement order and they are not following that enforcement order you have the right to take them to civil court and there we do have the wetland enforcement manual which is a great guide that, that provides lots of information about enforcement i'm also here to help if you have questions on enforcement i've i've gone out with conservation commissions 
And um, I don't do enforcement as a circuit rider on behalf of DEP. However, I can recommend that we do enforcement, but I can help assist the commission with doing enforcement and provide guidance as to how best to do enforcement. I've also helped um, if, if you're having questions with an enforcement order. You want to make sure that you're very detailed in enforcement orders. You want to have dates for everything when you want everything done by, and you want to be very specific with what you want done. Um, you, we also recommend that you don't do, you don't require a notice of intent for something that cannot be permitted. You should do it through a wetland restoration plan and not a notice of intent. And then that way you continue to do it through the enforcement order, which enforces and requires that they do the work, whereas the order of conditions is allowing them to do the work. Be very clear and precise. Make sure that it states that this is both for, you know, if you're having special conditions or an enforcement order. Be very concise, uh, very specific with exactly what you want. If, if you're talking about trees, make sure that you state, you know, the distance that you want them planted and the species, um, how soon you want them planted, and, and just make sure that it's very very specific with timelines. What questions does the commission have? This is my contact info. The best way to reach me is still through email, and I will get back to you uh, pretty quickly unless I'm out in the field. And if you want me to call you, um, you can email me and ask for me to call you, and I'll call you. As, as soon as I can. If, um, if you could also send me, I, I did hear you have a new conservation agent. If he could send me his contact info, I can make sure that I have it. And when I send out any updates, um, I'll make sure that he's on, on the list, as well as making sure that when file numbers are issued, uh, it goes to him as well. Thank you. Lots of good information there, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. It's a nice review. Very, very useful. You're welcome. Do you have any questions, or are there any other areas that you would like additional training on? I think that covers it at the moment. I don't know if anybody else has comments, questions, recommendations for other trainings. Well, that was great. Here's some good notes. Sure. Yeah, we've had some things pop up here recently that were uh, educational and also caused some questions. So it's good, good to get some things cleared up. Appreciate it. Well, if you ever have any questions, I'm here. That's what I'm here for. I, I help all the commissions. I know you have a difficult, a difficult job, and I'm here to help. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you for having me. Thank Thanks, you. Andrew. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. All right, so um, Joanne's given us a new filing deadline schedule, deadline hearing date, and the site visit date. Now that we're on to Wednesday, so thank you for that. Um, yeah, just as Andrew mentioned, though, there's a couple of the dates that are in there. Mm -hmm. Further on to the holiday Order section, holiday. where the holiday on the falls Monday. on that Monday. Right. So I don't, I don't know if we want to see what comes in, and we can adjust it at that point. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Yeah. So we got the eyes across the T's. Right. So As I mentioned, we had no filings today, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have your preferences if you want. Okay. Okay. Next item is agent updates. I don't know if you have anything for us, but. I would just add a little bit to what um, Andrew pointed at. Okay. So um, I served on the Oxbridge Conservation Commission for three years. We were a very active commission. Um, we did a lot of enforcement. We had a lot of solar fields. We got we got the rush, you know, seven years ago. Mm. Um, we had 11 solar fields. We had some very serious uh, impacts from them. We had restorations and replications and 
grinding towel and all of those things came out. Um, I'm a believer in the wetlands enforcement manual. Um, it has some, some good information in it. Some of it's far to the left and, and a little heavy. I'm, I'm, as I mentioned to you in my interview, I'm not a, a believer in um, you know bringing people to their knees, but convincing them that they just need to protect the land and be a good steward. Um, we have some outstanding problems, um, just going through some NOIs and going on after these rainstorms. A lot of our products don't have wetland signs. They don't have the DEP number displayed. Um, I have some good information that if you want, we could do a couple of, um, you know, 15 minute training sessions at the end of a meeting if we have a slow night or, or something. Um, I will email everybody a copy of the Wetlands Enforcement Manual, mm -hmm. um, so everybody can, can have that. Um, our website is very light on information for wetlands protection, mm -hmm. so I stole a bunch of it from the Conservation Commission I was on mm -hmm. and changed the names to protect the innocent. I'll forward it to, to you folks and your permission, we'll get it put on the website. Um, it, it explains to people what you can and can't do and why you don't want to do it. Um, and then um, contact is a, is a problem. We have a, a definite IT problem in the conservation office. Um, I joked at the department at meeting yesterday that Fred Flintstone used the computer that's um, at my desk. <laughs> uh, it's ancient. And, um, Joanne's email doesn't work properly. It, it, it can't connect to the town's actual email service. Mm -hmm. The phones um, only, the phone ring on rings on both desks when a call comes in, but you, it only leaves a voicemail on Joanne's phone. And that doubles up the work that she has to do going through all the messages. So we unraveled that and got the right phone number for the <coughs> agent's phone. Mm -hmm. and, and we've asked them to update the website and get that done. Mm -hmm. And then I did talk to Julian today about advertising. The planning board uses a different newspaper, um, and they have a very flexible advertising schedule. And um, Julian said that you folks were concerned about the cost of the ads for the proponents. Mm -hmm. But if it's going to hinder your schedule, um, you might want to consider using an alternative newspaper for those difficult dates, okay. and, and not having to adjust the schedule or just seek something that's a little more compatible with when you want to meet. So you're talking about a daily paper as opposed to a weekly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the fire chief has been promoting an online newspaper, which I looked into, and I don't see anywhere to advertise. I've contacted them, and they haven't gotten back to me, so that's not encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, but the planning board doesn't seem to have any problem with getting things advertised and squeezed into schedules. Or I think would help. Okay. And then we'd like to um, archive a bunch of records out of the office. I don't think anything's been purged. So as we talked about it two days ago, an email came out yesterday that there's boxes available for archiving. Mm -hmm. So Joanne ordered some boxes, and she's going to talk to the clerk and find out what the, the rules are for you know what comes out of the cabinets and goes in the basement to so get that done. And if we're going to meet in the, in the conservation office, um, you know, going forward, I understand the finance committee uses this room too. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to get a small projector and a small screen mm -hmm. for the office so that people can display their plans and, and people watching TV can, can see that as well. Right. Um, and we can use Wetlands, Wetlands Protection Act money for a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. um, but if the town has CARES Act money that can pay for it, um, we should go that way. Okay. Uh, and is that something that Julie would answer for I'm, us. I'm talking to her about that, yeah. And we're looking into getting a new computer with two screens for Joanne and a new computer with two screens for me. Mm -hmm. And just bring that up to date. We have printers that don't work that we're paying service contracts on. Um, that's all been centralized, so we're, we're going to work on that. I got the plotter working today. We're able to copy full size plans now mm -hmm. and do that. It won't work from a computer, oh. it runs on Windows XP. Oh so my gosh. <laughs> Fred Flintstone had that, so, yeah. <laughs> but we are able to copy plans and enlarge the plans. So, awesome. the, the Board of Health did get permission to
to buy a new um, plotter scanner, mm -hmm. and it's going to be installed in the hallway somewhere so that all the departments and party ways can use it. Right. And that'll solve that problem. And um, that's about it. Okay. Hold on. For the second day. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. it, it's nice that I did it before, and and um, I was the chairman for a year. We didn't have an agent for a few months, and the chairman has to wind up and step up and be the agent and yeah. go out and do the inspections, and, mm -hmm. and you learn how to make it a little easier, pretty quicker. And I, mm -hmm. I explained to Joanne that we're going to work smarter and not harder. That's okay. Yeah, that's a good okay. thing. Um, I would like to get um, a telephone for the agent so that we can actually put a phone number on the, on the website. I did this in Uxbridge. Mm -hmm. Someone sees something on a Saturday, they have a kid and they want to talk to somebody, call the phone, leave a message, you'll get a phone call back. Right. Um, out on an inspection, rather than give out your personal cell phone number. I made that mistake. I won't say it's a mistake. For the quarry, I gave a butters to the quarry my cell phone number. and. Mm -hmm. They, they don't get carried away, but I do get phone calls at 4 o'clock mm -hmm. and 5 o'clock, you know, saying there's noise in the quarry. When the earthquake happened, mm -hmm. my phone lit up mm -hmm. at 5 o'clock in the morning. Something horrible just happened at the quarry. And I said, no, because I live in Uxbridge and something horrible just happened there. <laughs> um, so it had to be an earthquake. But it was very helpful to the people and the public likes being able to get in touch with somebody when they want somebody. Um, mm -hmm. That instant gratification means a lot. And if we could do that for the for the taxpayers, it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And I think right now, a cell phone is about fourteen dollars a month, and we were reimbursing the agent for a cell phone anyways. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that works. Great. Anybody else with business for the commission? Nothing here. Nope. In that case, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right. Yeah, that's...